Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining me and welcome to the reading room for yet another fundamentalist fail. And this one's a bit different. It's not, I, I don't know if it's really fundamentalist, but it sort of sums up a lot of what I consider to be the worst parts of um, one of my pet peeves, which is is woo. Um, and, and the woo's out there, it's coming thick and fast. Um, these people, they've got like hundreds of thousands of subscribers. It, it is just, um, and, and I'll point out with this one, it, it I watched it and it encompassed everything I hate about these wooey arguments and how deep these people are into their weird, 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 weird beliefs. Um, I, I think that sort of, so this one comes from a channel called uh, Shaman Oaks, who apparently does sort of near-death experiences and out-of-body experiences and all this this kind of stuff. Um, just, just already, like, so already a great show. Now that you're here, Justin, now you're here. It's uh, fantastic. Um, so the, the Shaman Oaks guy basically does all of these kind of just, just lots and lots of just, you know, um, person shocked by, you know, proof of heaven after he had a unique vision, you know, this kind of stuff and sort of healing meditation and all of this like really dodgy stuff but he also does have sort of 364,000 subscribers so it's kind of this it seems harder to to go through and debunk this than somebody just throwing this stuff out like just throwing it out and and we're gonna see like one of the examples and explain why it's so bad oh Kata, hello my favorite bug I'm sorry, I've got to say hello to Kata because Kata is my favorite bug. Hi, Kata. Um, and hello, everybody. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for Head of Kamikaze, Al Trucker, who was here earlier. Pragmatic Crystal, always pragmatic and always wonderful. Um, but yeah, I, I might just jump into this. But this is this is sort of what sums up sort of everything wrong with these these channels that people are sort of getting on board this stuff and I'll explain I'll, I'll give you a bit of context later after the video is over what what the problem is it's not particularly long so this might not be a, a long rant but I have to rant nonetheless because seeing this sort of the other day I was I was sort of you know just the sheer amount of these things on this guy's channel and and just how bad this is like it, it's terrible. It's absolutely terrible. But I'll, I'll do a running commentary and um, do criticism because uh, this deserves a lot of criticism. And don't forget, my disclaimer is uh, we're allowed to make use of fair use. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. So don't even think it. Hi, Ben Worm. Good to see you. Uh, are, are you ready for, for a near death minute? Hello, Robin. So good to see you um are, are you ready for a near-death experience and this one's weird because it's, it's listed like i didn't make this atheist thing up it's literally called atheist died saw the future we need to change one thing in brackets nde or near-death experience and it's like well how, how does an atheist have a near death? like are they an ex-atheist now are they are they now sort of a believer what 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 exactly are we we looking at now and and I don't think it really says and but but I'll have some context for that afterwards. But I want to go through this because it really is just a just a crap show from start to end. Like really. Um, so I'll start it off and let's see Heather May, who claims to have a near death experience. Party with friends who had just moved to Vancouver. I found it hard to breathe. I felt a lot of pressure in my chest. I thought, well, maybe I suddenly got sick. I didn't know what to think, to be honest with you. It got to be so bad that I ended up going to their washroom and I stood in front of the mirror and I said, Heather, if you do not get help or say you need help, you're going to die. There was a feeling that came over me about that. And it was. Yeah. Um, generally, when you're, you're, you know, having a lot of pain, it's probably a good idea to get help. Oh, thank you, Pin One. One of one of my favorite creators doing his thing very professionally. Thank you, Pinworm. I really appreciate it for five dollars. Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, I mean, I try to be professional. It, it doesn't work all the time. Um, I, I just 
Yeah, I, I really appreciate that. I, I really do try to take, um, you know, I think that if you're going to do YouTube or, or anything um, where you're sort of um, expecting uh, recompense of any type, I, I think that you do have to be professional about it, or at least you should try to be professional about it. Um, a, a lot of people get into, you know, just sort of treating it like a a um you know just a just a just a gimmick just a lark just doing it to make trouble and drama and i just i i think it's you know i, I think I'd, I'd like to take things more seriously than that but thank you pinwem I, I really do appreciate your kind words um okay how old do you have to be to be near death apparently it can happen at any age and it was a foreboding feeling and so I left the bathroom and I said, I need an ambulance. The music got turned down and they all looked at me and they said, what? I said, I need an ambulance. I need an ambulance right now, right now. And my fiance at the time said, no, 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 no. I'll take her to the hospital. Do you really want to go to the hospital? I said, I need an ambulance. I, need an ambulance. I said, don't take me to the hospital. You don't know this area. So anyways, I don't know what I got picked up and stuffed into the car. Do, do, do we know this was actually a life-threatening thing? Is, is it a panic attack? Uh, it, it's, this, this presumably was a life-threatening thing. Um, I, I think most people, um, I, I think it was a heart attack. I'm not sure. I presume she'll tell us. Um, apparently, oh, yeah. So Heather May had a near-death experience as an atheist suffering a heart attack. Okay, so she found herself in heaven where she was greeted by people she used to know. During her NDE, she was shown how energy works, what will happen in the future, including all of the wars, and what we need to move forward spiritually. She also saw the Hall of Records, Crystal City, and the Place of Healing. Heather spends her time teaching others what she learned on the other side. She sure does, and I'll get into that later. I, I think 420 can be a verb. Sure. Sure. Why not? Sure. We're on a black highway. I have no idea where he's trying to take me. That feeling just grew and grew and grew within me that I was going to die. It came to a point in time where I surrendered to it. And then all of a sudden, this darkness came very slowly from the back like this, came over me slower and slower and slower. And it was a black like you'd never seen. It was pitch black. Okay. But this darkness came until it was just a small time. It, it's black like things you've never seen like you've never seen. Sure. I I don't know. Like, I, I don't know how your black is any blacker than an absence of light. I don't. Uh, something doesn't make sense about that. I small tiny little hole that that's all i could see out of until that was gone now i'm in pitch blackness call it the abyss or the void because i don't know what to call it but it was it was so comfortable i'm, I'm sure you've thought of something oh wait, wait you've got two names already the abyss and the void so you do know what to call it <sighs> yep 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 there even though it was pitch black Pitch, pitch black. There was no top, bottom, sides. Like it was just this incredible vast space. It was very much like if you're ever at a lake and you're the only one there and you're just floating. I didn't hear anything. There was no sounds. Just that sensation of floating, of being completely supported and very, very comfortable. There was no fear. I had absolutely zero fear. There was no stress. I was more or less intrigued. Well, I mean, I once had a dream where I fell down and hit my head, like I fell off rocks and hit my head and there was blackness and sort of I, I didn't feel or sense anything and it was kind of comforting, but it was a dream. It wasn't real. Like, this is the thing, like, okay, let, let's assume she's telling the truth and she did have a heart attack and she did sort of get close to uh, uh, death. She wasn't actually dead. Her brain was still operating. Um so it's kind of this this process of dying where your your systems are shutting down and and that may shut down your sort of autonomic nervous system as well so yeah when you say hey there was no fear yeah it, it that might have been the case it might have shut that system down in the process of dying but you didn't actually die your brain never stopped working to be honest with you i was intrigued about what is this 
led this place. I was so curious as to how dark this really was that I had taken my hand and to put it in front of my face to see if I could see my hand. And I could wait. You had a hand. Okay. Well, you've obviously got something working there. Um, so, you know, you couldn't see your hand. Yeah. There's been a few instances in the darkness where I haven't been able to see my hand. I, I don't. I don't necessarily think it's some kind of anti-light. I, I don't understand how this light is is like so. So darkness isn't a thing. It isn't. It's just the absence of light. There's not. It, it, I mean, I'm, I get what she's trying to say, but how is that any different than just not having light? And I could not. So that's how dark it was. Now, way off in the distance, I saw this tiny spark of light. It's the only thing you could see in the whole entire vastness. The only thing that I could see, and it, it got bigger and bigger, and it seemed like it was coming towards me. And I just watched with a sense of curiosity. There was really nothing else I could do. It wasn't like I could move and run or anything. I was suspended as it's coming closer and closer. And I realized... Oh, there was a raid? Oh, well, welcome, President Sunday. Welcome, viewers. Uh, good, thank you for joining us. Um, we're, we're just currently watching some absolute nonsense about an, a uh, near-death experience. And I'll uh, explain <laughs> why that is. Um, the, the, the moment we've got the uh, darkness being a thing... A, you know, not an absence of light, but it actually being a thing that is enveloping her, which is kind of weird. Um, which, because darkness isn't a thing, it's the absence of light and sort of the tunnel of light thing. So we're, we're getting all of the greatest hits. Um, and, and I have no doubt she experienced maybe something, um, maybe she experienced this, but what I want to get to and what, what, you know, sort of her her things is, is how do we know that that's not just her brain shutting down? And how do we know what uh, uh, happened in the first place? Um, we, we really don't. But it, it's interesting to see um, what she's saying. And, and we'll be going through why she's saying it afterwards. Well, sir, and I realized, oh, hey, wait a minute. Uh, that looks, it looks like a tunnel. Looks like a, a cone, even. There you go, Kata. There you go. If you're four twenwing, it, it looks like a cone, mate. So you go for it. Even, even she sees the cone. Swirling with different tones of gray and, and sparks of a brighter light. And so I'm watching this and now it's getting it's closer and closer and I'm watching it. It's coming above me. But now I'm ascending upwards. I have no control over that whatsoever. But now I'm suddenly in it. And You're in the tornado of light. Okay, so it's a tunnel, then a tornado of light. All right. Okay, we're we're, we're figuring this out. We're 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 seeing uh the, what what what's going down. Um, so the the tunnel of light is a tornado. Is 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 it like a tornado, like sucking you in, or is it is it sort of just standing upwards, like in that photo? Is it sucking you in? I I okay. And now I'm starting to get nervous because I don't know what that is, you know. I have absolutely no idea. I put my arms and legs out because I thought, well, if I could touch the side, maybe I could stop myself from going up because I was trying to control the situation. I did not want to be out of control with this, you know. So, but it expanded on me. Oh, man, you can imagine the hair just just flailing, you know, in, in the ambulance, just flailing unconsciously, just trying to stop herself from going into the light. I. I don't know. Was she in an ambulance or did they take her in a car? I, I don't remember. It does sound similar to some some sort of some of those experiences. And she was at a party, she did say. So, you know, my first question would probably be, did you take something at the party? Um, even if you were actually having a, a heart condition, that could certainly throw things off. On me. Yeah, that's right, beheaded kamikaze. She did say she was at a party earlier. And I mean, that's not to say, you know, I'm just going to assume she had taken something, but. I definitely started to freak out a bit because that really meant I had absolutely zero control. I had absolutely zero understanding of what was happening. And I didn't know what this was. But as I'm going up and up and up and up and I could see because you're kind of going up and over. It's actually an up and over feeling. And I could see at the top of the tunnel, I guess we could call it this ex extreme bright light extreme 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 and then all of a sudden i was there and so i'm like i'm like this yeah it, it, it's 
like I get you. It, it's kind of weird. Okay, so you got to the end of the tunnel of light. She's really dragging this one out, but um, I'm, I'm really interested to see where this is this is headed. Uh, just one second. I've just got a and uh, welcome to all squid enjoyers. Um, welcome, welcome. It's uh, very good to see you. We're currently hearing an atheist talk about a near death experience, and I I have doubts, but you know, let's let's convince me. Let's convince me. Still don't know what's happening. I don't know what's going on. When I was a child and I had asked my father, well, what happens when we die, Dad? And uh, he said, nothing. We live, we die, that's it. Air in the ground. That's all. And so I took that as a little kid at absolute face value. And so, you know, that's why I didn't know about any of this. If I had read books or anything, I didn't know. One time when I was invited to my cousin's Sunday school, the teacher asked me if I believed in God, and I said no, and she was absolutely horrified. <laughs> wow. So anyways, I get into this bright light, and I'm stunned with the brightness of it. So it was it was like a blue-white light. A blue-white light. Okay. Okay, so it was a blinding blue-white light. I, I, I don't... Okay, sure. And within that white light are also silvers. And like, there's a lot of depth to that white light. It's not just a color. Then there were people. And the best way I can explain the people coming out of the light were if, if you've ever been to a football game and you know those really large lights that they all have up there, you take every single one of those lights and you put them ground level stacked on top of each other. And then people coming out of that. And I'm like, oh, it's a mob. Run. It's the mob. Run. Oh, you just wait, Kata. You haven't seen Annoying yet. You just wait. No, this is this is sort of very, very classic NDE stuff, like Tunnel of Light, um, people coming out of it. Um, maybe she is being abducted by aliens. I don't know. Maybe she is. Who knows? Like, what the hell is going on here? What the hell is going on, you know? There was a massive group of people. Could have been 100 or more. Big group of people. I like this and I'm rude. Hey, I'm really rude. And I'm telling them to back the F away from me. Get the F away from me. I think I'm going to get away. You know, keep away from me. Oh, wait a minute. There's Nanny. Yeah. And, and people have different um, sort of um, descriptions of this kind of thing. They sort of say, hey, I had no fear. She obviously did. So this is one, one section where her account differs from other people's um other people don't describe a blue light they describe a warm light um this is this has significant differences to other near-death experience especially culturally speaking other cultures have very very different things um there might be some some um constants across culture uh, but that may be just because you're experiencing the same process of the brain shutting down. We've got no reason to think this is this is uh, um, um, true or, or based in reality. Uh, it may just be the way that the brain handles um, death and 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 dying. Hey, my great grandmother. Oh, there's my great grandfather. There's my aunt Alice and my uncle Dick. And like I'm noticing these people that I knew that passed. And I didn't understand that. I absolutely did not understand that. And I said, uh, I just, you know, had said to myself, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Where? At yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, at least she's honest. She doesn't know what's going on. So, but she knows what's going on. Like this is the thing. This is every time somebody says, "Well, I didn't know what was going on," and then proceeds to explain what they think is actually going on. Um, it, it's kind of a bit weird, to be honest with you. Um, that that. They will say, hey, I don't know what's going on, but here is what was going on. Where am I? You know, I'm sorry, but I mean, that's how it was. I was actually quite rude. And uh, my great grandmother stepped towards me. And oh, this always makes me tear up. She said, Heather, you have died. And I was like, no, I can't be. You know, sorry. Um, she was the one who told me. I didn't know that that stage was when I started to recognize the light <laughs> you know that incredible light and it was lovely yes beyond beyond but 
we could imagine. Just incredible. And acceptance and support and kindness and gentleness. And um, I had fallen to my knees at the time. And you think, well, where the heck am I that there's a floor? <laughs> you know, I mean, that was that. that That's a good question. Probably one that you should be asking yourself. That never made sense to me. Where the heck am I that there's an actual floor, you know, but everything was was white. You know? But you could you could say that you could say that in a dream as well. You know, when when you fall to your knees in a dream or as I gave the example earlier, I fell off rocks and hit my head. Where in a dream is that rock? Right. Where does that exist? It doesn't. It doesn't exist. It's just your your brain it's just it's produced by your brain and things can feel very real in dreams i don't know if you've ever woken up with with a uh, uh, dream pain before um you know like you've you've been stabbed or something you've woken up with the feeling that you've just had that happen it, it it's happened to me so i don't um i don't i don't think that um just sort of saying hey i i uh, had this happen in my mind, where is it that this floor exists? Because for you to feel that in, in some kind of unconscious sense, it doesn't have to exist for you to feel it. It Dreams and, and these, these near-death experiences, there's no reason to think that there is actually physical objects somehow associated with them. And rather your brain is just triggering the senses to think that they are there. Like, for instance, I've woken up with phantom pain from being stabbed before or hurting myself. The pain doesn't doesn't translate over into the waking world. You basically, it's a it's a memory of a pain. It's like this feeling that you had, but in the dream, it seems very very real. Um, I, I think sus is appropriate actually for this one, but it gets better. It gets way better. you know and um i had fallen to oh and by the way it is friday it is good friday here i don't know what's so good about it but it's good that all oh, you guys are here so maybe that's what's good about it so but but here it is esther and esther we get fundamentalist fridays the, the, the fundamentalist fails i'd fallen to my knees and i was like sobbing how i don't want to be here i don't want to be dead I didn't, I didn't even get to live. I didn't even get to do anything, you know? That was my main thing. I didn't get to do anything. It was just, it was too short. I, I'm sorry. You're, you're in heaven, apparently, but you're lamenting that you're not back on earth. I, I don't understand this, this concept. Oh, I made it to heaven, but, you know, I really missed, you know, having to, to you know, clean every, every week kind of. Like, what, what are you talking about? Like if if you're if it's so amazing and so wonderful and so loving and stuff, why were you regretting anything at all? It's uh it's very strange to to hear people go, oh well, I made it to this perfect place, but I really, you know, wanted to do all of these things back on Earth. I maybe I don't know maybe. And then there was another energy, higher form of energy, and I could only differentiate that by a feeling the frequency vibration itself was higher oh here we go here we go get into the frequency and vibration of energy it's uh yeah and you could only differentiate that with your feelings so so here's the thing you've had a really unfortunate apparently an unfortunate you know mental uh, sorry, mental uh, uh, health concern, right? So you, you've had a heart attack or you've had something happen to you and you have gone to a place that you basically have, you know, you're not physically there and you can only differentiate this energy with your feelings. Um, it, it's It's hardly something that we can, you know, hang your hat on as being absolutely real. I was told that I was going to be okay. Yes, I have died. And that we immediately went to a life review. It was really fast. I'm, but I'm sorry, a, a life review. You had you had a review of your life. 
a life review. Uh, you're being marked on this stuff, apparently. Okay. Which, you know, and, and I do have to point out how much this contradicts with other people's um, experiences of NDEs. Not a lot of them say, oh, we, we had a review of my life. That's what we had, a review. But it was, a, it was an interesting life review. Uh, I was afraid of anything, and I wasn't afraid of this presence. And that's all I can explain it as is a presence. In the face or anything, everything's telepathy. Even when my grandmother was talking to me, everything is just immediately in your head. Immediately. Maybe it was just all in your head. Im immediately in your head. It was telepathy. M maybe it just was in your head. The life review, it's as if you're so submersed in it. It's not like watching a film, or it wasn't like that for me. It wasn't like watching... <laughs> it that sounds like a game show. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, I got to read this out. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. This is Life Review, the show where we go through that time where you pissed your pants at your son's recital. Yes, you too could win a washer and dryer in Life Review. What happens if you're a complete pile of garbage? Like you just, just, uh, you know, you get it replayed and you're like, yep, I did that. What if you're proudly trash? You know, like, you just you just see yourself, you know, doing a dump in the street, and you're like, yep, yep, deserved it, yep. It wasn't like watching a movie. Above me, the signs, below me, I was immersed in my life in all sense of it, but be well beyond the five senses. Well, Interestingly enough, I have read reports on sort of life flashing before your eyes when you're in a very dangerous situation, and um, I have heard one hypothesis that it's sort of your brain trying to find memories that may be able to help you out really quick so there may be something to your life but this sort of life review stuff people don't say this in ndes this is where her account diverges very strongly from everybody else's and as well beyond that i think the most interesting thing about that that i have found uh was the understanding on how we affect one another we even when we have a thought about somebody they pick it up subconscious but they pick it up and they'll they'll store it you know so if you have a really harsh thought about somebody um they pick it up and they they bring it into themselves as part of their um understanding of themselves hmm. as children there was this one gal we were friends but we were always fighting with each other it was kind of one of those odd friendships we were mean to each other but when we got along we got along you know and um there were some things that i had said to her that she took into herself as a truth yeah, so this this seems like wishful thinking to me. Um, she's um, seeing things that and, and relationship that she's had, and it comes out. Um, it, it comes out as this, um, um, you know, I helped this person. I, I I helped this person in their time of need, and I helped this person. You know, they took this thing I said on board. Um, it seems very sort of as a band-aid to what may have been a, a very dubious relationship. Um, uh, I just had a thought of you, Mark. Did you pick it up and store it? I, I, look, I, 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 I'm always thinking of you, Justin, always. So, yeah, absolutely. Mm. Right into her body as a truth, as I did as well. And we always were in an energy exchange between the two of us as friends, always in an energy exchange. So... You never know what kind of energy like this is the thing I, I hate it that they throw up this idea of energy like you you share energy with somebody um what kind of energy like if you're just talking about emotional um sort of they, they're sort of using emotional energy as an actual thing so um I, I don't think there's any actual energy being exchanged it's just your emotional uh, interactions with people can have effects on you. Is that an exchange of energy? No. No, it's not. No. It's just how you interact with people can affect you. Um, but there's no, like, sort of um, spiritual, uh, uh, actual energy being transmitted back and forward because energy in physics is the ability to do work. It is actually something. Um, and sort of you can 
um, be affected by people, sure, but that's not a transmission of energy. It's just your reaction to uh, what they're putting out, your emotional reaction. On how I hate it when people use sort of emotional entanglements and emotional um, um, uh, uh, sort of interaction as some sort of energy because it's not like somebody is just say somebody is an absolute douche canoe to you that you can you can isolate yourself from that and I do so on many occasions when I'm with you know sort of very very horrible people in a room you can just you, you don't have to sort of respond to it it is simply your emotional reaction to how they're behaving it's not it's not this energy that they're putting out it it, it seems very very um it, it's just woo it's just this whole idea of oh i'm going to project this energy not to say that you can't sort of you know manipulate people with with what you do it's just you know your 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 yeah the, the whole idea of calling it energy is kind of a bit silly a little bit of kindness to somebody can change their life there were some people that i had absolutely no idea that they took it on as something that was so incredibly helpful to them that it altered their course wow you know like that was huge to me absolutely huge i was in a group hall and there was six of us girls i would always say to them you're more than your body. You're more than your body because, unfortunately, for a lot of girls, uh, they go with to stripping or things like that to, you know. Sit. Oh, okay. So there's something wrong with with that now. So it's it's sort of it it, it feels like. Um, and I was I was looking this up the other day, and I've decided to keep using it a bit more. It's sort of main character syndrome. Um, Main character syndrome is kind of where you think that you're the main character in a story. Um, that that you think that sort of you have this massive um, um, a massive um, um, sort of part to play that you 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 have sort of this this special. Uh, touch. Um, and and it's kind of this thing that I see a lot around at the moment, like like people thinking that they're they're everybody else is just characters in their story, and and I think that it's sort of a dangerous road to go down. They don't have much of a foundation, right? Um, this one, this one girl that I was sitting and talking with, and you know, hoping that she wouldn't go in that direction, she actually didn't. So that was amazing to me. I thought, you know, it's so the life review isn't just, oh, these were harsh things that you did. You know, you're also shown wonderful things. You're shown wonderful connections you had with people, um, mm -hmm. even animals, pets. Um, you know, the exchange that you have with the world around, shown all that. But what's interesting about it is, you really feel. The sense know exactly how the other person felt 100%. So it's almost like you're a part of them, but you're not. You know what I mean? Well, I, left hand, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't try to analyze somebody. I don't have the credentials, nor the experience, nor the training for that. Um, it has been associated with sort of narcissistic tendencies. Um, and, and, you know, I, I would probably um, sort of... Um, I would probably sort of um, um, I'd probably sort of say, yeah, I, I would associate it with it, but I certainly wouldn't, you know, uh, diagnose anybody. Um, because we are actually so interlinked energetically, we really are. And then it went on to my parents. How are we more interlinked energetically? And, and this is the thing. Energy is the ability to do work in physics. That's what it is. The ability to um, affect the world in some tangible way. And so the type of energy that she's talking about, and, and Brando, I, I, look, I, I don't specifically want to debate. I'm more than happy to discuss it if you want. But, like, I, I get what you're saying. I, I get what you're saying, that we, we do produce heat, we do produce uh, light bounces off of us. All these things happen, sure, absolutely. And that is 
the ability to do work. That's the kind of energy that we're talking about. So in the case of heat, we're talking about long wave radiation. So um, um, basically anything above a certain wavelength, um, you know, sh light is, is short wave radiation. So anything below a certain wavelength in the visible spectrum. Um, that, that, and that bouncing off or, you know, like you said, sound waves, which is energy, it's, it's vibrations. So yeah, that's energy too. But what she's talking about is an entanglement of somebody's energy with another person's energy, which isn't happening. And, and that, um, that, that whole idea that you're energetically entangled with somebody else, that, that you're projecting some sort of energy that is influencing them and vice versa. I think that is not true. I think that it is our reactions to what's going on around us that 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 emotional energy doesn't exist. Like we give a positive energy kind of thing. Um, and and I think, I mean, it, it, don't get me wrong. It's fine as as sort of a metaphor or a shorthand as an attitude of positivity that can influence others around us. But to look at it as an energy, as something that has the ability to do work um, by itself outside of the sound waves and outside of the light and outside of that kind of thing is, you know, that's not true. It, it isn't actually an energy like sound waves are energy, like light is energy. And I don't mind it as a metaphor. Don't get me wrong. I really don't mind it as a metaphor, but it is not like when you're looking at physics, your emotions are not energy they don't they don't actually do work in the real world that's all i'm saying um i i don't think it's actually energy excuse me my 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 aura is is white thank you very much i am a pure spirit friends and having the understanding that um oh sorry dave so this is an atheist having a near-death experience um the the this woman claims to have been an atheist had a near death experience i i presumably became a believer i'm not sure but i i have some doubts about her story um and and i'm going to go through that so that's all you really need to know um and uh yeah those are my parents that was my sole family and that we have agreement they took agreements with me. I took agreements with them before incarnation even actually happened. But not everything is planned out. So we have also free choice. I was shown about karma in the sense on how that works. And that's part of also these agreements. So I was shown other lifetimes that I had had. One of them was I killed somebody in another lifetime. Hmm. And I'm being shown that. And then I'm shown the person who we had an agreement we were going to reverse roles, not to the point of death, mind you, but some uh, really traumatic stuff, you know, and um, I was going to be the receiver. Hmm. They were going to be the doer, you know, so I was shown that as well. And so it did give me a much better understanding as to why some of the things had occurred that just seemed out of left field for me. It, it does seem like wishful thinking. It does feel like, hey, these events occurred in my life. I had a near-death experience and suddenly there was a rationalized, justified reason for all of them. How do we check that that is actually the case, that that what your brain is showing you is actually true? Um, yeah, I, I don't I don't know how, how you do that. I, I don't know how you show that you're claiming that these events in your life, hey, I was shown that they actually had positive impacts or these impacts that I was unaware of previously, how do we get to know if that is true? Um, so the atheist is a Buddhist now? I'm not sure if she's a Buddhist. I, I don't know. I, I don't know. It doesn't really say outright. She might just be into spiritualism and stuff, but, you know, I'll, I'll get to that afterwards. And it's, it's no problem, Brando. No problem at all, mate. It, it's it's all good. You know, I, I actually enjoy people that disagree with me. Um, I, I really do. Uh, but uh, but uh, I, I do debates and stuff. So um, if you want to debate, don't hesitate to email me, and, and I can debate. Or if you want a conversation, don't don't hesitate to to um, email me. I'm not I'm not as scary as I first may appear. Um, brain does weird stuff. Sure does. My brain does weird stuff. And um, the thing is, so. Um, 
Yeah. So, so Brandon, yeah, a smile feels good, but it's kind of that, that thing of empathy that we have. We empathize with people, somebody passionate about something, we can empathize with that. I think that um, um, people with empathy will feel happy when they see somebody happy. It's kind of one of the things that we do. You'll notice that somebody without empathy, when they see somebody happy, they might try and stop that. They may actually feel hostile towards that person. So it's not necessarily the case that you feel happy when when someone smiles. I mean, I do a little bit. I, I am on the spectrum, so I do miss that stuff a lot of the time. But yeah, it, it, you know, you're talking about social cues, which isn't really uh, uh, empathetic, uh, which isn't really sort of energy, energetic um, at all. But that's okay. I get what you're saying. And, and so as, as a metaphor, I don't mind it. It's just as as something saying, hey, that is energy. It, it, it's not true. It's not actually energy being transmitted there. I learned all about energy and the human body because this is what I was going to come back with. So I was shown in, um, in lightning speed. It's like, it's just there. All the information is just there very, very, very quickly and flashed in front of you. This is how it works real quick. And so how the human body works on an energetic level, what we take in, what we put out, how it moves within the body, all about the auric field, all about energy points and how emotions work and how Yeah, okay. So she she basically has got this insight into how energy works in the body and these auric fields. Um how, how do we tell if they're true? How do we actually know that they are true? Um so she apparently has learned all of these things. How do we check that? How do we test it? How do we find out if that's the truth? I don't know how we do that. Um, Karl Popper has a lot to say about, about unfalsifiable things, things that we can't disprove. Um, and this seems to be one of those things. How unprocessed emotion affect the physical body. Brains are so incredibly, so incredibly powerful. We can hinder ourselves or not. We can make things better within ourselves. What we direct out there is a frequency and that frequency we can also invite so depending upon it, the lower level frequency, higher level frequency, how to move energy, how to pull in energy. It's almost like using the body as filing cabinet, you know? Oh, I'm gonna stick this file and I'm gonna put it over here, you know, or in my lower back, or because I don't have I don't have the luxury right now to deal with that. And so we file it and put it away. Well, yeah. Yeah. I I I mean, some people can't. Uh, you know, some people have uh, very, very uh, uh, um, serious um, pain that they can't just file away. That that's why sort of we we do need to have have sort of um, other other therapies and stuff. I the Crystal City. This is going to turn into Wizard of Oz real fast. It's like the Emerald City, but that transparent. I think. Um, Ah, uh, well, we're off to see the wizard. Here we go. Here we go. I also went to the Crystal City. Yeah, I'll get to that, Gigi. Immensely beautiful. It would be kind of like um, I was 15 miles, 20 miles out. And I wasn't there very long. Somebody came to meet me. I didn't get to see their face. Who was this person? Who was the, who came to meet you? Was it the wizard? Was it the Wicked Witch of the West? I, I don't know or anything i didn't i just knew it was a, a body and somebody who really liked me because they gave me a great big hug basically it's not my time to be home so i was like oh okay and then going immediately gone from there uh, okay okay show them the place of healing for souls who have done their their lifetime and sometimes lifetimes can be really traumatic and we go to a place of healing there's healing pools there's water healing water which is incredible as well yeah oh and everything's marble everything was marble white marble it was quite interesting actually columns there was columns. white marble why marble like this, this does seem like a um, archetype kind of thing that that um, 
you know, she she like white marble is associated with with luxury and and splendor and and sort of um, um, you know wealth and opulence and all of these things it's associated with. So, you know, her brain throwing up white marble is that unusual? Is that something? Um, you know, and is this something that other people see? No, no, it's not. Reports are very, very conflicting about what people do see. And this is one that I've never heard before. Problems. Some souls can be there for quite some time. Not that there's time as in how we understand it, of course. Some could be there for a very, very long time, depending upon the life. No, I'm Murder Birda. I love that name. Murder Birda. Mark Reed is a ginger. What? No, I'm not. What are you talking about? How dare you? How dare you? Um, she's describing some kind of purgatory, and you go until you've done your time. No, she's she's describing a crystal city and and a healing place. She's sort of describing, I don't know. It, it's definitely she might have been there to start off with because she described this blackness, but she was yanked out of there. Then she went to the crystal city. She she got yanked out of there into a tunnel of light. Saw her relatives. Her relatives said, hey, um, she swore at them, apparently. Um, then she went to a, uh, a, a crystal city, and then um, she sort of uh, went to this place of healing, which is water and marble. Um, so Roman baths, basically, I would assume. Experience that they had. The Hall of Records. And there was the Hall of Records. I call them the Hall of Records because, I mean, at that time, that was the language that I used. I'm not sure if this is sort of, you know, um, a near-death experience or, or, you know, a Jedi temple. I, I don't know what this is because not a lot of people describe these things. Uh, you know, this, this baths of, of healing and, and, you know. And I understand that everybody calls it a Catholic records. It's fine. It doesn't really matter what we call it. Well, that's hardly surprising, mate. Um, yeah, it, it's kind of Christian um, beliefs sort of encompass all of it. Um, you know, we're, we're in a culture that has this overtone of, of Christian faith. So it's it's hardly surprising that your mind will throw up like that. As much as I dislike it and and sort of that, the, the, you know, I was talking about this with iconography, like why do so, uh, singers use devils and demons and things like that? And people um, in, in music videos, you, you have things like semiotics, which are, you know, if you want to sort of um, sort of show purity, you use white. And, and light colors kind of thing. If you want to show darkness, it's black and reds and things like that. These things are so inbuilt to our culture and it kind of annoys me. But, um, you know, if you want to show somebody is pure and holy, you'll give them a halo, which is such Christian iconography, but it's, it's heuristics. It's a shortcut of our thinking to associate those two things together. So, and that's kind of almost built into our culture. You know, we'll see a white person with a halo and we'll immediately think angel um, or, you know, some sort of holy person. Um, it, it, you know, and, and artists use these heuristics to get across um, principles and concepts and things very, very quickly. The books are as, as high up as you could possibly imagine. And I was shown my book, my book. Well, I, I think I saw this in a Terry Pratchett book, to be honest with you, like a book that writes everybody's story kind of thing. Um, I'm a huge fan of Terry Pratchett. and It was cool because the person was reading it. I think it was uh, Susan Death was reading her book and it said, oh, Susan stared at the words that were being written across the books as it was writing it because that's what she was doing. Um, and everybody has a book kind of thing. So maybe she read some Terry Pratchett before she had this this near death experience. That is quite possible. Uh, he was a very good author. Obviously, had a lot of lifetimes because it was pretty thick, you know. So I had uh, I've been around quite a bit of times. Um, and within that, there was uh, like a little running beat, you know, obviously of this lifetime. 
which I found odd and strange, you know. And then, of course, when Harry Potter came out, I thought, did they talk to some people who had NDEs and maybe had looked at their book, you know? So I thought that was kind of interesting when I watched Harry Potter many years later. What I It was interesting when I watched Harry Potter many years later. Okay, well, was, was books writing stories in Harry Potter? Were they writing your life story? Because I know that Terry Pratchett did that really early on um uh and that was in the the realm of death in in terry pratchett's uh, um um thing what's it so uh that was definitely in um mort i believe was the book was mort when was that written 1987 so wow all right yeah that was a long time ago what uh 30 that that's true that that's 100 percent true yes oh it does that in harry potter right right writes the story of your life okay i i wasn't aware i wasn't aware i was also shown was on a soul if that is in terry pratchett they stole uh, if that is in uh, uh uh harry potter they stole that off terry pratchett that they 100% stole that off Terry Pratchett because that was ages ago that he wrote the, the book writes itself and writes the story of your life. Not all souls are kind of in the same place. So if you've got a soul vibration on, let's say, a level three, well, they're not going to be in the same soul understanding vibration as somebody sitting at five or six frequency. I'm sorry, we've got levels now? How do I level up? So it, it, it's interesting that kind of like was with like. There's many different levels, many different levels. There's a place that you do go and you have mentors where you are working out your life agreement. I'm sorry, we have an agreement also- now? Your life agreement. I, I don't think I have an agreement for my life. I think, I think this life was kind of thrust upon me uh, without my consent, I might add. Uh, which is fine. I, I, you know, I'm happy to be here, but it, you know, I, I didn't consent to being born. I, I didn't consent to uh, uh, any of this, but you know, I'm happy to be here. That's okay. I, I will allow it. I will allow it. But, but, uh, you know, what is your life agreement? And this is the cosmic board. Oh boy. So a cosmic board. Is it the same as what people are talking about nowadays? Is the federation? No, it's not. Different. What would I liken it to? Not quite a government system, uh, but they're there to to talk with you, to also help you and others. And they're they're from multi dimensions. And it's hard to wrap one's head around that. I totally get that. You know, I was surprised as well, but nothing shocked me. It's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, I know all this. Oh yeah, I know this all from this side. You know, because uh, we when we incarnate, um, everything's wiped clean. Some of them. So it's beings from other dimensions that are aboard. I, okay. Can we can we confirm this in any way, shape, or form? Why don't other people make this cosmic board? Why why is this just you? Why why is this only you that you gets to make this cosmic board? We're just pure light. In human just form, or like in a, in a form, or like just a, like a ball of light, like a no. ball of light, a ball of light that would kind of change colors from pink to white to maybe very, very pale blues. Others, I could actually see their faces, really. Some of them had a white cloak. There was one specifically that it was blue, a blue cloak. When you're there, you just, you know that they're from other galaxies, other dimensions. Uh, yeah, no, we know they're from Ravenclaw with a blue cloak. What, what are you talking about? Like, how do you know that they're from another dimension because they're in blue? What what is this? This this is really weird. Yeah, and it's kind of I agree, beheaded, and it's kind of this. Well, I felt like they were, and they all come together. They're extremely wise. Some of them, I guess, we would call them like maybe they look like ETs. You know? Yep, definitely. <laughs> yep, yep. So aliens are extra dimensional beings that you see after you die. Mm-hmm. Okay. I would definitely say that, but I can't say that I could really see the face of every single one of them. I could not. It was a long table, and they were all sitting around it, and that area was illuminated. But anything around that, 
was black. It, it's it's the Illuminati. The Illuminati. After you die, the Illuminati appears, uh, full of full of aliens. And you know, well, this party that you're at, were they like? Was it a watch party or something? Were they watching Close Encounters? I don't, I don't know. I don't know, but I suspect it was a watch party for Close Encounters. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know exactly where we were for that. But there were also time periods being shown modes of travel, which I haven't really spoken about before. I, at the time, called them uh, wormholes. Yes, yes. Yes, she just said wormholes. Yes, that's what she said. So the um, the sort of... Yeah, the interviewer, if you've noticed, he doesn't have to prompt her a lot. She's She's sort of doing all of this very very sort of well i have all of this lined up ready ready to pop off the tank and there's probably a reason for that but wormholes are a a physics phenomenon it, it's sort of a um i mean we, we haven't even confirmed their existence they're just sort of something in physics that people have postulated so um all of this is reflective of, you know, sort of like the energy and the wormholes and sort of, it's very Deepak Chopra-ish, right? It's very sort of um, science fact mixed with science fiction, mixed with this spirituality kind of woo stuff. Um, and it seems very disingenuous when you put it all together. Um, it, it, it seems like she she is is sort of regurgitating a lot of of common tropes from modern life essentially just tropes um the bright light the the white marble the 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 ets the you know physics energy um you know or just all of these things from from modern life she's sort of just just hurling up as evidence of a near death experience which I got to say is is pretty lacking and I'm not saying that her brain didn't kick all of this stuff up but what I want to know is how do we know it happened in actual reality and wasn't just a figment of your brain that is dying kicking it up hmm. I went through a couple of them they were showing them to me it was flashes of color like a tube and it was extraordinary I think that's the doctor who graphic I think that's, I'm expecting a TARDIS at any point to come flying through that thing. Uh, I felt it was kind of a bumpy ride, but I don't know why I felt that way, but it seemed that way to me, you know, um, but it's modes of transportation to get one place to the other, uh, but not for everybody. Others could just imagine it in their mind and then they're there. So it's not for everybody. So I didn't know how that worked really. Like a, like almost like a portal that just opened up in space and you went through it? Or was it just yeah. always stationary off to the side and you kind of walked? Yeah, maybe, maybe they're watching too much Stargate. I, I agree. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, I mean, the, the time that it sounds like it was probably Doctor Who, but beg to differ. Do it. You, you could just travel through it. It would just okay. suddenly be there. You travel through it. It was really interesting. And is that how you got from like the Crystal City to the healing place? No, and, the or, Crystal City was well, that. Okay. It was immediate. Yeah, so she obviously didn't need to use the wormhole. She had teleportation powers. Look, I... This seems like a really funky dream, to be honest with you. Like, I, it really sounds cool, but how do we know it actually happened in reality? How do we know that that's actually something that she experienced for real? Because I have some funky dreams. They're not real. I always like to ask people, how real was it? Could it have been a dream? Oh, gosh, no. It, even light does not feel as real as that. You sense more. You know more. You, your senses are so highlighted. Okay, so here's the thing about dreams and visions and all of this kind of stuff. You cannot change light levels in them, right? So you can't, your, your brain can throw up what the light is like, but you can't voluntarily change light levels because the amount of light that you're being subject to is always controlled sort of it's hardwired into our eyes so for instance if you're dreaming and you want to know that you're dreaming flick a light switch on and off and the light levels won't change because that's unable to be controlled it can't be controlled um the 
the the light hitting your 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 eyes is something that is set in stone. Now, just just for a second, imagine this. Imagine she's in this this car being whisked to the hospital when it's dark. Right, it's dark in the car. That may explain why she was in darkness. And then she gets there, and people are shining lights. They've got lights on her. Suddenly, there's light around. Um, it isn't a great um a great stretch to imagine why she has visions of darkness and light with the light being controlled by her eyeballs there's also when you're asleep if you are dreaming or think that you're dreaming another thing is try to read things because when you're you're like asleep it turns off the center responsible for uh language in in your brain um that's why a lot of the time you you don't hear people talk in dreams. It just arrives in your head because the, the language centers are turned off. But you also can't read anything. So try to read. Here everything's kind of dimmed down, right? It's more dim, you know, whereas on the that experience was like, wow, and now I feel alive. Now I'm alive. I, I've what was I doing before? Obviously, I didn't feel like I was living. Yeah, and this is your feelings. I, I get you. Like, you had emotional feelings about it. But why do we um, why do we think that this is actually something that happened in reality, especially when it conflicts so much with other people's accounts? A dream is so almost like two-dimensional in a sense, you know, absolutely no way, no way. No, I... I have met a lot of people like my family was not into hearing about this. I'll tell you that right now. They were not supporters of it because, of course, that was their belief structure. Right. And never did push it or anything. But um, it was definitely uh, a lonely journey at the time. Well, dreams can be really, really vivid, like incredibly vivid. Like people have woken up and they're unsure whether they are in a dream or, or the, the dream was reality. Dreams can be incredibly vivid. Um, it just depends on your your sort of brain at the time. I don't. Oh, Divids, thank you so much. Uh, you are a champion, Divids. Thank you so much. And uh, it hit Stoic. Congratulations, Stoic. Winner, winner. Chicken dinner. Congrats. Were you shown the future at any time? And here we go, seeing the future. This is something that we can test, right? You basically claim to have been shown the future in, in the afterlife when you had this near-death experience. Um, oh, absolutely stoic. Yeah, yeah, we know emotions can be manipulated. We can, you know, manipulate emotions through drugs. That's more than possible. Like, we, we use drugs to manipulate emotions with people that are depressed or, you know, people, people you know, have some sort of MDMA, for instance. They get incredibly loving and, and actively, you know, uh, uh, um, empathetic towards people and just care, you know. We, we know all of these things can be affected like that. I mean, that was part of the reason why they used sort of LSD on people kind of thing. We, we know all of this can happen. So, you know, a, a brain that's dying and releasing chemicals, I don't see why we should trust that to be actual uh, real. Oh, you're going to ask that one. Uh, this, is, this is the future. This is something we can possibly uh, tr test kind of thing. So um, we, we can test to see whether her, her predictions for the future of what she heard can actually come true or not. Um, that's something we can, you know, she's got some testable predictions now. Oh, hello, Justin. Uh, is it is it a raid? If someone's raiding, welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I don't know if anybody is. I, I don't know if Claude's is big enough to pass over from me, but thanks, Claude. Appreciate it, mate. Um, I can say no. Or you can, we can skip over it, or I can just not include it. But I'll share it, and then you decide. I don't want to scare anybody. That's I don't want to scare anybody. I, I think I'll be okay, lady. I, look, what, what's her name? Heather May? I, I think, I, Heather, I, I'll be fine. I'll, I'll, I'll keep it together. You trust me. I, I, I will... I will, I will, uh, uh, woman up. Uh, I will, will harden my ovary. I, I will keep it together. I, I really will. It's my whole thing, okay. and I do talk about it. I was sitting in some kind of chair of some kind, and there were golden balls about this big. So much. Anybody like balls? It's going to be about the balls. Get out your balls, people. Much bigger than a basketball. And I was sitting, and it would come in front of me, 
and it would open up and there would be a movie in there. It was the start of mankind in warring wars, murdering each other all through the earth's history. One after the oh, whoa, and Yahooligan, your boy, Yahooligan gifted 10 readerships. You champion, who did you hit? Uh, Gabriel Things, Spooky Bed Hair, Eric Erpelding, Icarus, Professor Phil Bell, the prof, it got a membership. Uh, the Dark Canuck. I, I love that. The Dark Canuck. Like all of the other, other Canucks are, are, are light. It's, it's the Dark Canadian. I love it. Um, Hayward Jeb Lumi, Kiwi Burb, and Stoic already had one. Dean Wolfos. Wow. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, winners, winners, everybody. Woo! Nice one. Wow. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. The next one after the next. And it just kept going. It was actually um, the level of trauma was huge. <laughs> Absolutely huge. Death, death, death. Um, lots of fires and lots of um, death from water, flooding, um, what we now call tsunamis even. There was lots of Oh, and left-handed Jedi is on the board as well. <laughs> Thank you so much, left-handed Jedi. And we have Big Thank Flying Wayne, Stephen M. Hawley, Lucky, Rhubarb. That's a really rhubarb. That is rhubarb in really weird letters. Uh, that's cool, though. I like it. Uh, Jasper. Thank you so much. Awesome. Winners, winners, enjoy your emotes and and uh yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Test that's see, we're coming more into our world today. Um, definitely saw all the wars, all the wars. I mean, it was just absolutely excruciating to watch. Uh, yeah, bad. Um, a lot of unrest. And our world a lot of unrest yeah yeah there's been a lot of unrest there's been a lot of wars so about these predictions of the future that you're, you're you're talking about 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 these predictions of the future the future that you were shown um and not to be outdone i'm gonna unload one as well there you go uh david street space potato a skirmish tinker phil Jolly Roger, bam, bam. Whoop, whoop. I, I'm getting on the train. I, I just, I just, I, I'm going to spend all my money on my own channel. It's terrible. I, I, I sure. Why not? Screw it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Why not? Stuff. You only live once, right? Right. Yeah, it would be impressive if someone predicted a time of peace. Sure, welcome to the readership. Yeah, hit those emotes. I've got, I've got big for Jesus. I've got sus. I've got tangent for when I start talking. I've even got a band hammer. And my personal favorite: keep calm and masturbate. That that's my personal favorite. It 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 fits more situations than you'd expect. Um, um, people, just take a minute. <laughs> Desperate to be hurt. You don't look like you're cr actually crying. I, I, maybe it's just me. Maybe you are. I don't know. I don't know. Be, um, desperate to be, um, as much as a priority as anybody else, and um, marches, and um, anger. Lots of anger. Lots and lots and lots of anger. Um, there really, there's going to be anger. That's that's the first prediction. There's going to be anger. Okay. And it's all kind of where we are right now. <laughs> we, we've got to shed. We've got to shed. Our beliefs. We've got to shed. I mean, I've got a bit of flaky skin. I exfoliate a little bit. We've got to shed what? I'm angry at a video as well, Gigi. That's why I shared it with you. It makes me less angry to show you people. It really does. I don't know why. 
beliefs about other cultures, our beliefs about other people to get to get through where we need to go. I'll leave it there because I find it terribly sad. Lots of civil wars all all dotted all over, unfortunately. Yeah. Okay, so anger and civil wars. You got anything more specific on that or or what? So you're... Lots of starvation. I, I had I actually I had asked them to stop. I asked them. So that's her prediction. At some point in the future, some point, there's going to be anger, wars and civil wars, and starvation. That's not that's not predictions. That's just a general overview of what we should expect based upon the history of the world like that isn't that isn't that isn't a prediction that isn't telling anybody anything that is the most vague prediction ever yeah you're right beheaded it's happening now that's the worst prediction ever and then she said oh no i got them i got them to 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 stop because i couldn't see anymore really you could tell everybody where the next problem of starvation is going to be and how we can address it. And you say, nah, I'm too sad. A little selfish, but I don't think she actually saw the future. So, you know, I think it's just, oh, well, I saw the future. Really? What did you see? Anger, wars, hungry people. Any specifics on that or... Oh, I don't know who Kat Kerr is. Who's Kat Kerr? Is this is this a famous a famous truth teller? Is this is this a, a prophet for the ages? Oh God! Oh, she looks she looks terrible. Okay, I'm going to keep that one under wraps because I I've got a feeling she's going to be be fun. Just stop. I I, I couldn't bear anymore. What was the point of it? Do you think just? We've got an important message for you about the future of humanity. No, no, I can't bear to look at it. Really? Really? Yeah, what was the point of it? Well, I was thinking that maybe if I didn't ask them to stop, maybe I was going to get to the good stuff. <laughs> oh. But I couldn't bear to see any more of it, like the, 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 the death, the children. Won't yeah. somebody think of the children? Yeah. Yeah, what? Children are going to suffer. That's your prediction. Wow. It's all of it. I, I couldn't. But, but why did it start? Like, why did that happen to begin with? It was did... to have the understanding of, um, unfortunately, what we do to one another oh. and over what it is. And it could be over religion. It could be over. It, it, it could be. That, what do you mean it could be? You've apparently seen the future. You should know what this stuff is over. Like, that's the thing. It's the most vague stuff that, you know, well, well why, why did it happen? Oh, it's to show us the, the, what we do. Well, it could be religion. It could be this. It could be. Haven't you seen what it is? Nope. And, and you don't need to go to heaven to, to make these sort of, predictions it, it, you can make them without any kind of near-death experience and yeah we have dissimilarities between our cultures and people will be angry and you know these things will happen sure but you don't need to go to heaven to predict that be over land it can be over crops it could be it can be over anything so you've seen the future you've watched this television this golden orb television that has shown you exactly what happens in the future and you're saying it could be over anything i'm sorry didn't you see the program start don't you know what it's over the understanding that we're all here for the same purpose we're all we're all here as brothers and sisters i'm not sure we're all here for the same purpose to be honest with you i i think that um, most of us want the same things out of life. I think most people sort of, um, if you look at, say, the Maslow's hierarchy, which I know isn't really used anymore, but most of the stuff in it, we acknowledge that humans do need 
to survive. So things like shelter and food and water and, you know, uh, general enjoyment of your life and love and, and self actualization all of these things stacked up. They're, they're generally what people want out of life, um, feeling of security, safety, or all, all of these things. And most things are secondary to those. Like um, you may want um, a strong financial position to be safe and secure. It's not a primary need. You're doing it in order to do something. But I'm not sure that everybody gets on board with that. I think that a lot of people want power. Other people don't. Um, a lot of people uh, uh, want material things. Other people don't. I think that we do differ in certain ways. I think that finding those things that everybody kind of wants and, and then creating a system where um, everybody has the ability to get those needs met with, without having to go down certain paths, I think, is, is what we're after. Um, well, it, it, it sort of changed because because Maslow sort of put them into hard categories like tier one, two, three, four, you know, as, as we're going up. Um, to you know the the high ones like self actualization and stuff. It's more sort of convoluted than that, and it can differ between people about what they want. So um, we still do kind of use it, but it's kind of it's a bit different. It's more of a, a graph that sort of you know um, um, exponentially rises. Like you have um, a, a lot of need for the lower ones, but but you know the middle ones may um, be needed just as much as the lower ones in some people. It just depends on what your perspective is. I was not actually going to come back and I had dated, well, through crying <laughs> basically and, and in disbelief that I was dead, that I, you know, I didn't have a chance to really start and I didn't have a chance to do the things that I came here to do and that I wanted to go back and I, I wanted to do the work that I, I set out to do uh, in regards to my life contract, I was told. What is your life contract and who is it with? That's what I want to know. Like, what were you contracted to do and who was this contract actually with? Because I don't understand. Was it with the council? Did the council give you this contract? What What is it and what does it say? Because I don't know that I believe that this contract exists. I think that generally we make our own purpose in life whatever that may be i think generally that is the case but i'd love to know um I'd, I'd love to know what this this contract is you took a contract out on your own life well at least it'll be easy to to fulfill big bad mama at least it'll be easy to fill. don't do that don't do that old coming back was going to be you'll have to go and, and and see the council of illuminati and see your life played in front of you it, it, it's going to be a bad time don't do that far more difficult than before I died. On a physical, emotional, mental, psychological level, it was all going to be extraordinarily painful. And there were things that physically I wasn't going to be able to heal and I was going to live with that pain. So I was to be prepared for that. Then I was asked again, do you want to come back? No, yes, no. I do. Because that, when I was over on the other side, I firmly believed that I could do a lot of that work. Yeah. Um... Yeah, and, and and the thing you've got to remember about near death experiences—they're not actually death; they're near death. Your brain is still operating, because nobody, as far as we know, has has had total brain death and then come back from that. Like once your brain has stopped, it has stopped; it will not recover. Um, the what what we're talking about is the shutting down of your essential organs, like your your heart your lungs, all of that stuff. But it doesn't mean your brain has ceased to do stuff. It will still do stuff. So it's not actual death because you're not dead. You're near death. We're connected to each other. I think if we if we could just have that understanding how connected we are to one another and 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 let go of all our, our false beliefs of one another and really have that understanding that we are energetically a part of each other at all time. We're all human, period. Don't have to have all these divisions and everything that have been created. I think if my wish could be anything, if we could just get to that. This, this interview has also been heavily edited. I don't know if anybody else has noticed that as we've gone through. Like there's a lot of cuts and stuff. 
which is kind of weird to have an interview that's cut so much. Um, usually you would you would do an interview and just take what the person says. You know, that would be the ordinary uh, journalistic approach. But this seems to have been cut, and it seems to have been cut in her, you know, editing out whatever of, of hers that maybe doesn't fit or doesn't sound good. It, it it seems very, very odd to me why you'd have so many cuts in in an interview. Understanding. How do people find out more about you? I'm on Instagram at got underscore insight. So here we go. Here we go. And this is what I wanted to point to at the end of why um, this, this account exists. 28 years energy and chakra reader and a Reiki master. Right. So literally her info for yeah, two, two, two times near death experiencer. So apparently it happened again. Yeah. So I mean, I, I'm not sure how old she is. She probably doesn't look any older than 40 something, I would say. Um, which means that while she may have been an atheist. Um, she definitely was into woo, um, probably when this happened, or at least got into woo right afterwards. Like this is this is sort of, you know, she's a Reiki master now. I don't know, you know, sort of how how hard it is to become a Reiki master. I, I don't know if there's accreditation that you need to have, um, but it is in her best interests to sort of say, hey, there is an energy between everybody because that's what she does for the living. The more that's cut off there is um, certified Yusui Reiki Master and Mindfulness and Breath Meditation Teacher, DM for free consult. So she's out sort of promoting herself. That's what she's doing. She's promoting herself. This this isn't a interview with somebody who's had a near-death experience um, and just wants to share their story. She's actually using this this thing as part of her credentials. There's also my email address for anybody who wants to email me. It's got insight with an S at got insights. You've got a story is what you've got. And you're you're leveraging that story to convince people that you can, you know, do healing and read auras and things like this. It's nonsense. It's absolute nonsense. You can read chakras. Right? There's nothing wrong with mindfulness and breath meditation and things like that, but Reiki is a load of crap. It really is. You know, it promotes well-being by relaxation kind of thing. Yeah, I sure. But the claims that they make um, and, you know, the claims that these people make that they can alter your chakras and align your, your energies and, you know, heal you. No. Oh, no, I clearly need to get my chakras aligned. Yeah, absolutely. My chakras are definitely out of alignment. You're a Reiki master. Okay gmail.com i would and here's the thing if these alternative therapies work we should be able to test them why can't they be tested we can we can do scientific studies of these see how much impact it actually has if it is the the placebo effect that will come out right that will absolutely come out but Alternative medicines will never submit themselves to scientific testing. They won't, because it will sh surely show that they are just a placebo. The alternative medicine is all nonsense. If alternative medicine worked, they would just call it medicine and use it in medicine. Like they wouldn't, we wouldn't have an alternative. But they do lobby and they do make a lot of noise to leave them out and something aside. I don't see why alternative medicines should be exempt from testing. I don't see why. 
Because if this works in actuality, we should see results in actuality that are not the placebo effect. But they lobby to never be tested in this way. And I might add, the people that probably brought her back to life wasn't some Reiki master. It was probably somebody in an emergency department. Let's not forget that. That she wasn't resurrected by a spirit. She was resurrected by a doctor or a nurse. With people one-on-one. -on -one. I've been doing that since the 90s. <laughs> I do energy readings. because You've I... been doing that since the 90s. Yeah, I bet you have. Yeah. The energy all the time. It was one of the things I came back with. I teach people. I see energy all the time. I see energy. What kind of energy and how can we tell that you're accurately seeing this energy? How do we know? Can, can we get a whole bunch of energy readers in the same room and see if they agree? Like, just ask them separately. You know, what do you see here? I will bet you they never align together. I bet you they never, ever line up. Everything that I learned on the other side and how to work with energy, that's what I teach. And I give them tools so they don't have to keep coming to people like me to learn how to do the work for themselves. And that's it. So, yeah, come to me. Learn how to cure yourself. I've been through a near-death experience. I see energy. I see this stuff. Yeah, apparently she did come back with magical powers. So a lot of this stuff can be tested. A lot of it can be sort of, does this actually work? And and you're, you're right, Justin. It, it's either been proven to not work or hasn't been proven to work at all. And as I've said, the, the alternative medicine people, um, um, they don't like to be tested. They sort of say, hey, ours is outside the bounds of science, and, and it shouldn't be. Uh, John Hopkins? Okay, okay. Uh, I wonder what the results of that were. I really do. You're reading my energy? Ah, oh, mate, I bet you are. You can always read my energy. Hey, Titan, good to see you. Um, but yeah, this is this is sort of the stuff that really drives me crazy. It's the, I had a near-death experience, come and buy my woo. Because if you look at her Instagram um, on here, so she basically teaches people, come to your workshops, come to your, you know, emotion, self-awareness, what, you know, sort of, I'm not saying everything that she's doing is wrong, but sort of divine messages it, it, it it's kind of this, she is just selling herself as this life coach slash um, insightful, wise person that has the answers and can teach you for a price. But the consult is free. The consult is free. You know, get them hooked on it. The, the first taste is free. And this is what, what worries me. I'm, I mean, this, this channel that uh, Sherman Oaks, he's got sort of 364,000 followers. It, it's, it's crazy how big they are. And, and here's the thing. I'll just share this. First comment on it is, years ago I had a lucid dream where I saw a gorgeous place with marble columns, as she describes here. I thought, this is the place of death. I can't stay here. My young twin sons need me. And the dream ended. How wonderful to have my lucid dream validated. I look forward to returning there at the end of my life on earth. I'm now 73 and my babies are 50. I'm ready whenever my time comes. You had a dream with marble and you think it confirms this, this lady's story confirms that your dream was real. I mean, come on. It, it's just, it's just nonsense. Yeah, so that's that's uh, that's that's this lady Heather May who is basically probably making a living off of telling people she's had some kind of insight. And I mean, I'm not saying everything that she says is bad. Like mindfulness is a thing in psychology; it's certainly um, helpful. Um, sort of meditation can be helpful for people. I, I'm not saying that, but I'm saying that her claiming that she can read chakras and 
she has some kind of insight into a um, any kind of health um, that she can look at people and and determine their healthiness and and two she's got insight into anything in the future is absolutely laughable um, when she's asked to sort of talk about the future it's so vague it is so nonsensically vague um, and so unable to be um, um, checked upon um, I, if I was interviewing I, I would have said you know like if you saw the future in these orbs even if it's just one war can you tell me when that war starts where and why that would be a decent prediction you know if she says hey a civil war will start in uh, the Congo, in this country, um, you know, just say it starts in Zaire in uh, 2025 because of lack of food. That would be a decent prediction. I mean, we'd probably have to investigate and see if she could find out, you know, is that war on the horizon? But it would at least be better than people will be angry. There will be wars and civil wars and people will go hungry and stuff. Big freaking deal. I could tell you that. Anybody can tell you that. We're already predicting that into the future. It's, uh, it, it's incredible. Define real. Define real. I think, I think, um, so... It's sort of hard to say when you say it's real um, or exist is even a harder one. Exist is incredibly hard to define because you can say, hey, Homer Simpson exists. He is a thing. But I would think that anything in reality would have some kind of causal relationship with something else. Um, so um, I am real and um, say the, the um, you know, signals in my brain are real. Um, that can cause me to go out and do something. That, that would be a real thing. But say um, uh, Ryu out of Street Fighter is not real because it has no causal relationship. That actual, you know, Ryu character cannot make anybody do anything. Now, the thought of it might be real. Like, I might think of it and those those sort of signals in my brain are real. And so I might go, hey, I'm going to, play a game of Street Fighter. That, that's real, but the actual character is not, um, not real. Can experience be a synonym for real? No, no. Because um, once I have seen um, on a, uh, all I could say is a heroic dose of acid um, in my youth, don't do that stuff anymore, but in my youth, I'll just say on a heroic dose of LSD, I once saw a bridge turn into a caterpillar and crawl across the city kind of thing. Now, while the, the signals in my brain, the, the inputs and, and what the altered um, um, signals are, oh, good night, you hooligan. Take care, mate. Take care. Um, what, what those signals in my brain were are real because they had a causal impact. They caused me to see that. The actual worm itself was not real. Okay, because that worm didn't actually bust any buildings. It didn't actually move. It didn't actually have any causal relationship. It didn't move anything around. It's not real. Okay, so um, we've got to differentiate between the concept, uh, the the um, um, image or the, the experience that you have and what actually has a causal effect on another thing, what actually makes something happen. Because if you if you um, uh, have a dream where your house burns down, yeah, the the signals in your brain, the electrical impulses and the chemicals, you know, the fear that comes, that's all real. But the actual house burning down and the fire, it isn't actually real. It will not cause anything to happen. Okay, e even though the the signals in your brain might might make you look up and smell smoke after you've woken up, because they're real, the fire itself isn't. Okay, so that causal relationship is what's missing. Um, and that's how I define real. Now, other people may define it in a completely other way. And, and I get that. But I, I think that that is um, how I would define something as real, as if, if it can causally react with something else. Yeah, 
Yeah, and we know fictional characters. Sure, sure. Yeah, fictional characters aren't real because you know you can you can have um, a, a a slender man kind of thing in fiction. You you can't actually go out and you know he can't actually go out and do anything. Now the um, impulses in our brain that has that might make in in actual example two girls um, um, uh, murdered somebody because they thought that slender man was real. So the thoughts can be real, but the the slender man itself is not um but that's about all for that one um what am i up to tomorrow i'm doing a special stream i haven't actually put it up yet i will do that this afternoon good friday for easter i promised you all hovind runs a cult so uh mark hovind is going to be back because i love irritating hovind so very much it it, it makes me happy um that that he he goes you know no, playing the arcade is a real experience and the, the arcade machine is a real experience. The, you know, the machine's real and the electrical signals going through it are real. We can we can measure and test them and they have causal relations. If somebody puts their hand on the board and the, the signal hits their hand, yes, it, it, it will give them a shock. It is real. But the character itself isn't. It's just a just a image. Um, and it can't actually like Ryu can't come out of the machine and uppercut you. Don't don't believe the lying lying movies. It can't happen. Um, what was I saying? Yeah. So tomorrow, uh, that that is a good Friday today. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, but tomorrow I will be doing Mark Hovind. Um, so Hovind plays Honey. I I joined a cult. Um, and it'll be a continuation of my special Christmas episode. Hope you can join Mark Hovind for his uh, sterling, sterling performances and, and amazing gameplay um, as he rails against the IRS, uh, atheists, and everybody else that makes him sad. Um, on Sunday, I'll be over on Better Than Ember. We'll be doing a follow-up to the Hovind versus Anderson Thing. I, I didn't mean for it to be, but apparently it's Hoven weekend this weekend, which is just hilarious. Um, so there, I'll, I'll be over on Better Than Embers, and I'll grab that YouTube channel for you, and I'll put that up on my community post as well, so so you guys can see the follow up to that um, to that debate review, which is just just hilarious. And and I don't know what the review the um the follow ups are like. It would be uh, Anderson talking about his side and and Hoven talking about his side. I, I have no idea what they're like. I'll be perfectly honest with you. I haven't watched them. Um, I, I was going to, but I thought I might save it for sort of a, a fresh reaction. You know, just just see that fresh reaction to uh to these two guys. <laughs> National Hoven Day. Uh, I, I know he'd he'd love it. He would love it. Yeah, so that's better than Ember, and I'll be over there um, in two days' time to uh, talk about a follow-up. Um, but, yeah, that'll do it for the Fundamentalist Friday. I hope you enjoyed. Please do like and subscribe. It helps me out a great deal. Thank you so much to everybody who contributed. Um, um, Pinworm and Divids, Yahooligan, Left-Handed Jedi, and myself for some reason. I, I don't know how much I get back of that money. Probably almost nothing, quite frankly. But I, I was just taken by the, the the spirit of doing readerships and decided to do one. I don't know why I did that, but I'm sure someone will explain it to me after I die. You know, I'll, I'll get I'll get the my life story shown to me, and someone will say, "Hey, this here's why you did that." Um, but don't forget, in the meantime. Please be kind to yourself. Um, it's it's pretty pretty uh, uh, weird out there. Be be definitely be kind to yourself. Be kind to other people. And thank you so much for joining me. Take care, everybody. <laughs>